Hello and welcome to the Every Other Saturday podcast, a brand new episode this week where well, it's been a couple of weeks, there's a lot happening, transfer windows mm-hmm. obviously heating up, uh, the last episode we done was kind of covering serial Dessers, uh, the possibility of him joining, and um, we had just signed Sam Lammers at that point as well, so up until then we've got another two faces in the door, serial Dessers did indeed join after quite a long saga um, in terms of that deal, and one that came out of the blue pretty Quite pretty quickly, and it was done with Abdul Asima. Um, so we'll give our thoughts on the two day signings. Not looking to bolster the attacking options for for next season, Michael Beal squad. Um, we'll talk about a couple of the other lingering rumours. Um, for the past couple of days, while they're still fresh, and um, mm. I will take it for there. But I, as always, you could like, subscribe, share. Uh, hopefully, we're gonna get a load of content out when we can. Um, just detailing everyone that's kind of going on because it's, there's going to be hectic I think um, players come back the Germany Al McGregor's testimonial and then it's friendly season and then you're basically looking to Champions League draws in the start of the season after that so the team's going to need to be in the, the right condition it's more looking at probably bodies out I would imagine um, mm. at the moment but Gerard nah, Gerard I mean you've got the money there go and take um, the offer hands do as a favour for the, for the way you left the club but uh, I <clears throat> first we'll go on to um Abdul Asima then. Uh Abdul Asima kinda came out of nowhere. I think it was like a couple of weeks ago, Saturday night, the news was broke on uh, the mail sport that we were close to getting this guy in after no prior rumors. Um kinda just came out of nowhere and immediately for me personally, <clears throat> obviously yourself and anybody that's watched the channel since the last fifty five when we started this, um our videos on Slavia Prague, we were raving about this guy with the way he played against us. Um, obviously, they, they came out better in that tie as well. He was the one that you looked at um, at that time and well, he's he's going to be a player. I think he was 19 then. Um, he's he's moved to Brighton. He's never actually got on the team sheet, loaned out to Stoke City and then he was at Angers last season in Ligue 1. Um, again, similar to Cyril Dessers and, and Sam Lammers, he was down the bottom of a top five league. He still scored mm. goals though. I think he scored five or six goals for, <clears throat> for Angers last season. So, decent return. Again, a right mid. We've not really had any success in that area for for a long time. I don't personally think um, Beal's going to play wingers. We're, we're looking at this um, setup we've got so far. I think if he's going to use him, it'll be as a kind of fashion Sakala esque not a striker, not a winger, kind of somewhere in the middle. But what's your thoughts on on the signing, Nasima? I mean, it came out of the blue, really, didn't it? I don't know, Cameron as well. Well, looking at this one, hoping. Um, it just came out of the blue and it was, it's a nice surprise to get Jack it was a, a nice exciting to have at the doors you say known for previous spells in European ties um, but I really just came out of the blue I look forward to also seeing what the boys got to offer um, but I it was, it was a shocker signing me I didn't I don't, honestly because we're all obviously keeping our eyes on the boy for the MLS and then obviously um, we were waiting on one or two other ones coming in but this one really to me was it was out of the blue and I think it's a good I, I know Bill's kind of He's came out and said um, in the past transfer window he doesn't want to like go for loans, but I think mm. looking at the whole it's market, a smart one. It's, it's, a it's a smart, smart sign, one. and you're not investing any money into a transfer fee. You've got a good, promising young player who, again, has shown so much promise in the Europa League at the latter stages as well, and he's shown promise in, in Ligue 1 in Fren- uh, the French League, so... There's a lot of promise to come with this guy. You just hope he recaptures some of that Slavia Prague form and he really brings in his uh, his game here. By the end of his loan, Brighton's contract, he's got a year left there as well. So if this guy turns out to be an absolute world beater for us, we could then maybe go and capture him on a small fee. But due to the way Malik Tillman I'm played I'm out, you can never, never there. Uh, uh, don't don't be falling in, in love with any loan signings again, Jack. I told you this. <clears throat> stay, stay far away from that. But no, you, you never know, mate. You never know. It could potentially happen. But uh, it, was, it was a nice surprise to get. Um, and as you say, I hope the boy can deliver on the partner. That's very really yeah, really Definitely looking forward to seeing what sort of role, as I said, Bill maybe going to play him as like a just maybe off serial Dessers or Sam Lammers, mm. Kemar Roof, Antonio Cholak, if he's still here, whoever plays up there. Either way, it's exciting options we brought up top now. That's what I'm really looking forward to. It's it's not the same boring 
Do you know what I mean? Week in and week out, Kent's getting picked. So I'm happy. What's, what's still weird, actually, as you bring it up, it's not going to be Kent Morelos and somebody else. Well, now. It's going I, to be a combination of so many different players. And you've also obviously yes. got Sakala, Roof, and Cholak there um, mm. currently. So it's really exciting just to have it so is. much freshness in the side. And I'm hoping Abdi Lassima can, can bring that into the, into the squad. Absolutely. Um, but then the marquee signing, I think Bill's sort of main guy. <clears throat> it was Cyril Dessers. And um, I, when this rumor first broke, when I sent you the the link that came out, I was I was excited because I really liked Cyril Dessers last season when he played at Feyenoord. I mean, he was he was fantastic in the Conference League. Um, got the got them to the final. I mean, looking at this guy, and then it was kind of similar to Lois Openda that season as well. He was on loan and kind of on the fringes his parent club and then um, both of them moved the Penders obviously went on and done ma- magical stuff at Lens and then Sergio Dessers has, has went to Italy and looking at some of his interviews that have came out the day as well he had one uh, came out in the Rangers YouTube channel his interview on Rangers TV speaks really well speaks really intelligently and that's what I kind of like where Bill's going to meet these guys he's going to actually see what they're like in person see how they fit into the dressing room I just I, I like this signing um, I mean a lot of people have not liked the, the transfer fee I think it was 5 million euros with 1.5 add-ons if they're ever sort of met four year deal you're looking at maybe he's going to it's be 32 market, 33 it? it's like you're, you're going to need to pay for a big striker Michael Bill did say that as well if we want somebody in that's going to score his goals it's going to be have that European experience he's played in a top 5 league you're going to have to go and pay money for him and Sergio Dessers comes to Ibrox and I can't remember the last time we actually properly got somebody who was a, a complete striker a complete guy who's not went through spells where he's been poor or still in development he's consistently performed and I'm not looking at that spell at last season at Cremonese with, with any fear at all. I know Cyril Dessers is a, a definite good player and I think mm. he in this in this league anyway, um he'll he'll score barrel loads of goals if we just provide him the service and he's he's a different option to to Kmar Roof to Cholak. He seems to be more in Morelos mode where he's physical and he's he's got that link up play in him as well and I, I, he's going to probably transition with whoever he plays with. Um, so I like that about Michael Beal's side it's very fluid in, in the way they play and I think Cyril Dessers is going to be the focal point of that Michael Beal wanted him in and, and the board have backed him to get the signing done he's, he's here now Absolutely I mean it's interesting to hear obviously talking about being here now could have potentially been here a couple of years ago when he talks in his interview there but it was obviously <clears> interesting feel like a couple, I'm, uh, hang on a minute here what were we doing a couple of seasons ago Um, but I mean, the main thing for me is we're going back on what Michael Beale talked about, which was we need to be clinical and we need to take our chances. This guy's going to be clinical and he's going to take his chances. So getting a proper goal scorer in, as you say, European experience, he's been there and done it. So it's, it's a smart sign. And obviously the fee, I know we're going to kick up a fuss maybe about that. But as I say, that's that's the market nowadays. You've got to pay probably through the roof to get the players that you want. Do you know what I mean? It's just the way it is now. This is exactly the way it is. I mean, you can't go and sign Feyenoord's top goal scorer in the conference okay. league last season for nothing like it's going yeah. to come at a cost and especially with his situation his contract at Cremonese as well we were lucky to get relegated so we could get him on a cup price yeah. uh, deal so I like the signing he said he a lot Michael Beals obviously was determined to get this one done this one came out as we say we done the, the episode a couple of weeks ago and it kind of lingered it went away and then it came back and all of a sudden he's, he's Rangers now number nine so really looking forward to seeing what Dessers has got to offer in, in the games that have to come up and um, I, as, as he said in his interview the day as well it's going to be big boots to fill in terms of the first proper striker coming in to replace Alfredo Morelos in, in a number of years so <clears throat> I'm excited to see what he's got mm. and I, I'm, I'm totally behind the signing um, welcome to Rangers Cyril Dessers um, and then on to a possible outgoing um, I think this has been rumoured sort of all summer Antonio Cholak um you see him standing next to Michael Beale there in the photo. Michael Beale. Michael Beale looks a bit rough, doesn't he? It <laughs> doesn't really yeah. seem to fit his play style going by what we've seen the Antonio Cholak so far um, under his tenure. I mean, there was a couple of good games he played in. Um, Hibs away, most notably, he was absolutely fantastic that night. Um, 
And there's there's no question about Antonio Sholak's ability. I think he's a fantastic striker. Anywhere he goes, he scores goals. 18 goals last season for how poor we were. I mean, the start of the season, if we didn't have him, we probably weren't scoring goals. Um, so, tip my hat off to him there. And in Geo's side, he looked, it looked like his kind of style. I yeah. just don't see a, a place for him uh, under Michael Beale anymore. If we can recoup some of the fee, even make a small bit of Let's... profit and put that towards a guy maybe that's a bit younger with a higher ceiling. Brazilian. It's Brazilian, no, he plays no. with Fire and all day. He's 24 mm-hmm. years old, and we bring him in. I mean, nice. I think it'd fit Michael Beale's style a lot more because it looks like Serial Dessers, for example, doesn't look like an out and out sort of number mm-hmm. nine. He looks like a guy who can drop back. Sam Lammers again can probably play across the front three. Can't well, everybody's got multiple positions That's they can play. play, they're not just sort of stuck to, to one where I think Cholak is. He's stuck just to just be that uh, guy, the target man, and I just don't feel that... Like, it's not a case of, like, I, I want to push this guy out the door. I like Cholak. I like what he's, he's done last season. 18 goals is is remarkable um, in that team last season. Insane. But it's like, where does he fit in? We need to start shifting players out to bring in, obviously, players that fit Beal's <laughs> system oh. a lot more. Aye. No, I listen, it, it totally makes sense to move Cholak on. As I say, you can't complain 18 goals is... I mean, you're saying there, mate, I agree with you, do you know what I mean? But if it's going to help us bring in more individuals, then you've got to push it out there, do you know what I mean? And as we're talking about versatility is what Bill's obviously wanting here. And uh, my man here is just obviously an out and out. So I, it just uh, makes all the sense in order to me to move him on. As a couple of players, I can't believe I'm still sitting here and Barisic is still up at a club. But why is Barisic still there? Why is Barisic at training? Barisic should not be there. What You know what I mean? What's happened to Scott Wright going to Preston and all? But the yeah, one that I get the most is if I if I look at the start of the season and I see Yalmaz on the bench and I see Barisic starting, I mean that that, is... that'll be one thing that'll annoy me. Like, I'm I'm fine wow. with Tav Goldson being there, right? But see if I look oh. over the left side of the pitch and it's Barisic, I'm like, how have he still got the same back four nearly? Um nah. I, I no questions about that. I think adding show back to the Even... list, there's there's a lot of people that will probably need to be uh Transfer listed. I would imagine like, again, it's only teams that come in for them and want them to for them to leave. You kind of just wrap oh, up with these contracts. Like I mean, you um, could easily just message the boy and just say, "Listen, I know you're in Saudi, and you're that wage. Come on, take Kamara, take Scott Wright, take Barisic. Do you know what I mean? Come and take them, but especially take Barisic, please." Yeah, take well, him. looking at the players that we're probably going to get ready, like Scott Wright, Cholak, um. Kamara, looking at them. I don't. Nobody wants him. Like, that's, that's quite sad to think about. Think about how good Kamara was, man. And it just feels like nobody wants Kamara now. And he's I just think it's just it's one of the problems the of obviously Celtic just won the league and they've sold Jota, right? We should mm. when we won the league, we should have sold Kamara. We should have sold yeah. players that like we just we didn't take the opportunity yeah. when they were at their their highest peak, and uh, that's the wrong doing. Us, we'll be lucky to even get a bit three or four million for Kamara now. Like uh, it's a sad way to go because I, I really love Kamara. I've always well, kind of backed probably. him. Always been a good player for me and my eyes, but just looking at him, he's not interested anymore. You need to go and try and get money now to to try and again bolster that that midfield and, and get maybe an addition in there who is Ecuadorian and plays in the MLS and should be here by now, but he's still hey. playing with LAFC for some yeah. reason. Um, like saying goodbyes for the 10th, 12th time. Aye, aye but that, that'd be a, a like for like change there. And then I, if Cholak has to go, Parma, Pisa, I think Werder Bremen are in for him as well. So good clubs, good leagues, and I wouldn't be too too much in complaint if, if he had to go and we recoup the fee and then sort of bring somebody in it will fit the, the system a lot more. But, I mean, a rumour that's kind of came out of nowhere, and a lot of fans love Leon Balogun. I don't really know many people that have got a bad word to say about the guy. But... um. This rumours came out the day that he's supposedly going to be joining a one-year deal. I like Leon Balogun, but this does seem to kind of go against what Bill has been saying for the last few months, getting a young squad in. And obviously, the centre-half position is light. Like, Suter, Goldson's injured. Davies, nobody really knows what's happening with him. Leon King's, in my opinion, not good enough yet to, to go and start a full season. We've also been linked to... Jonathan Panzo, Austin Trusty, like there's been players have been linked, obviously on a younger scale as well. Do you maybe go and get Balogun in for a year for, for free? It just kind of seems like a bit 
I don't know. What's your thoughts on it? There's, there's, I mean, there's, you can make arguments for it and against it, I suppose. But I mean, he's been talk, you're just saying there about how frail the defence is. I mean, it, it would make sense, maybe, as you say, because we look at the end of, do you know what I mean? We were Champions League, we'd end up playing Sands at the back there and it wasn't just wasn't going. So, nah, just, just that, how did we even do that last season? How did we know. let a season start with that? Like, <laughs> it's mental. <laughs> um, but, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't complain if it was a one year deal. I'd be a bit angry if it was more than a one year. But uh, I, mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be against it. As I say, if it was, if it was to come in and cover for certain games, do you know what I mean? Where you are like, if, if it's okay. just an option to come in, like, option. absolutely, he's going to be and on low wages, you would imagine as well. So, uh, it's... also might be wrong in the thing. But was he not on about coaching as well? So maybe it's also to do with the coaching. Maybe he wants to get involved in, in that kind of aspect of the game. Um. Maybe wrong with that. I don't know, but um, I mean, it was when he left. It was a, it was a, a tough one. Do you know what I mean? I thought. Do you know what I mean? It was fantastic here, and obviously went down with Bill in, in the championship, um, and then Bill came back up here. So maybe Bill wants to bring him back up. Yeah. <laughs> that that's maybe just one of my concerns. As his season last year, I mean, out of the forty six a game, six games for uh, QPR, seventeen of them he was available for. So. I don't know. He's always kind of been injury prone when he was at Rangers for the two years. I mean, there was games he was missing, but. But when he played, he was solid. When he played, he was solid. I mean, you could rely on this guy to put in an eight, nine, ten out of ten shift near enough every game. But the the concerning factor for me is he's thirty five now. That's like three years ago we signed him. He's maybe looking a bit more injury prone as he gets older. It does seem not... it does seem I'm... like a safe one where I thought we were maybe going to go all out and get a, a total young team in and sort of breed it together with he also, the players that were also there. maybe think as well Bill, there's an argument hanging as well Bill probably maybe looking at a bit of experience man's done it in Europe he knows what it takes to win the league here so maybe want to bring that experience in um, but as I say you get to have there you've got, you have people here already who have done it but I don't know maybe that's also his thinking there um, but I'm, if I might be mistaken, I don't know if he played out of position maybe for some of the games for QPR. I remember seeing that as well, but um, maybe I'm wrong there. I don't know. But I, I, I think I would, I wouldn't, as I say, I wouldn't kick up a fuss if it was a year deal. Um, but it is a bit out of the blue, just randomly. Um, but I, it's, it's a bit of a weird one. I just feel it's kind of, although I'm, I'm personally not Leon King's biggest fan at the moment. I think it is kind of standing in his way for him to actually go and yeah. impress and progress into this side if we're bringing in Balogun who mm. then Leon Pink, Leon King goes down the pecking order again and then you're like where's the progression into the, the first team for him I do feel like he needs a loan this season anyway so maybe that is the thinking send Leon King out and loan have Balogun in here and then by the time Balogun's contract's up Leon King will be back and hopefully ready to go and, go and play for us but I don't know, this one on Twitter anyway, since the rumours came out, has divided a lot of opinion. Um, I mean, a lot of people have kind of went on and said, no, nah, this isn't for me. A lot of people are kind of looking at it positively, like they have no problems with it if it's a year. Personally, for me, if it's a year contract, as I said, Leon, Leon King then goes out and loan, comes back, a better player, um, mm. with, with more experience well, and then he's ready. You need to loan him to a club where he is actually going to play, do you know what I mean? No, a club where he's... No, I definitely. Many times does that that happen? Do you know what I mean? I want these young players to get game game time and and develop. You know what I mean? You think of Alex Lowry as well. That's somebody who do you know what I mean? When he came on, it was a breath of fresh air, and you were wanting him to play, and then he just wasn't getting the games. And you want these guys to develop at the club. Do you know what I mean? It's it's something obviously, and always myself like I don't like the fact that we've got young hungry players there, and we just don't seem to do you know what I mean? Play them. I would rather you know what I mean? Give them game time and develop them. To club, do you know what I mean? Send them out on loan to clubs where they are going to get that as well. Do you know what I mean? Not just sitting about and sitting on a bench. Do you know what I mean? Just give them yeah. it. Just give them Chelsea, and then they they don't do, really do much with them. Do you know what I mean? Become man of the match in Europe and all that, and then they just go to Brighton. They don't even really play. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. I guess the the, the problem is for for the Balogun rumor is it's just for the for the centre halves so we've been interested in. I mean. I, I was really kind of looking forward to Jonathan Panzo coming to this club. I mean, Coventry last season, right to the very end, penalties. He was nearly not a Premier League player at that point. Still, obviously, as a Premier League player with Nottingham Forest, but obviously looking to make his move. Austin Trusty as well at Arsenal. Had a great season at, at Birmingham. Young guys, 22, 23 years old, with a lot of experience ahead of them. 
and they've already had a great deal of experience so short in the game. Like I feel it's just a step back for where we were. Our recruitment was on the right track, sort of. But I mean, it's if it happens, it happens. Heart and Hand podcast, obviously, who are pretty close to the sources at the club have said. Um, somebody's asked them, is the Balogun rumour um, to Rangers, is it made up? And they said, I don't think it's made up. No, could be wrong, of course. So that means that they're not, they're not immediately closing it off. It means there is some truth in this. There is something sort of lingering that this could happen. Um, but if we get Austin Trusty or Panzo in or somebody that sort as well as Balogun, I mean, I'm, I'm fine with that. Suter, Goldson, Balligan, and then obviously your other guy you bring in. Leon King goes out and loan. You sell Ben Davies. All's rosy, right? <laughs> All's rosy, hopefully. Um, I don't think I'm... Am I forgetting any centre-halves? Eh, uh, I don't think you're, mate, no. I think you're naming them. Oh, well, Hollander he left, didn't he? Aye, so... Aye, he left. He went in a free. Um, um, aye. Obviously, we'll see what happens with us. Um, I would expect it if it was going to be a reality that this will be done pretty quick. This will be done like in the next couple of days if there is any truth in it. Hopefully then, by that point, we can then talk more about Jose Cifuentes. I mean, I'm dying to just get that guy in the door. I'm really... I'm fe- I'm feared that we don't get him now <laughs> after all this chat. Um, <laughs> no, obviously, we've touched on it briefly in the episode as well. Daniel Fifayanord is like the dream signing of the summer in it. Like a Brazilian Fifayanord at Ibrox is just going to be unbelievable. Like so. Fifayanord. Uh, we'll see what happens in terms of obviously the team are in Germany and now there's a lot of good content coming out on their side for, for the training I mean Fashion Zakala looked electric in the training video the other day um, and just bye, hopefully get more content out in the games on Tuesday yeah, where we it. really get our proper first look at all of these players in a Rangers shirt at Ibrox and it's, it's going to be exciting to see new faces in this that's the thing I'm I also hanging with the bargain as well people want to see new faces in these jerseys don't want to see the same old people that do you know what I mean that have that have let us down at times, you know what I mean? So we want to see the new faces come on and electrify and I Tuesday, that's what it's all about, man. Tuesday for a great cause as well, big Alan McGregor getting his McGregor. farewell in it. Aye. Um so I looking Thank forward you. to seeing Serio Dessers, Abdul Asima, Sam Lammers and, and well Dujon Sterling's injured at the moment, which is unfortunate. But Aye. um Jack Butland as well, so I'm taking the gloves off McGregor uh, at Ibrox, hopefully for a for a really promising really spell to come. My gloves. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I that that's all for the episode today. Um, when these rumours keep on coming and we start maybe selling or buying more players, we'll be we'll be right on it with more content. Even? So, Barisic, and t- please. Until then, somebody buy Bond the Barisic, and we'll see you then. Thanks.